Here we are in Chinatown, Las Vegas, Nevada, where we are going to talk to a gentleman who had his foot severed off in an industrial accident. The doctors were able to put it back together. So let's listen to this young man as he explains it to us in his own words, how the healing process has been going for the last year. So you had your foot crushed by a safe? I had my foot crushed by a safe, dropped from a forklift, from a high place, a ramp. And it severed it? Severed my all the bones inside my foot. Wow. This toke was completely off. All the bones were broken and this was leaned over. There's a scar, it's hard to see, it runs all the way up here. This bone was out of my foot. Mm -hmm. This is a bone growth stimulator. It creates bone growth, helps create bone growth. Wow. It's a sonar type of machine? A sonar sound machine. The, the company I work for is a prominent company. The company whose forklift driver did this is very prominent. Can't uh, mention that. Well, sure. Now, most people are on um, the assumption when you sever a limb or a toe like that, that they just sew it back on, but that's not the case, is not, it? Not the case. Is the bones have to be lined up, but... And you have pins, like metal pins in there? They're out now. There's three pins are out, but there's two metal pieces inside the foot right now. And in, in, in the beginning, they had a metal and a pinky, or the little toe had a, a metal. Now, the little toe has a bolt driven in from back here. Uh-huh. Straight up, that's the best one that's healed the best. I see. Is it still in there? It's still in there, the bolt. This toe is broken right here. It's, it's mending together crooked at an angle mm -hmm. inside there. I see. This one has a clasp. It's a metal bracket with one, two, three, four, five screws in it. This one has nothing. The joint is smashed. I can't move my, my toes like I can my other side. This toe was completely off, and right about here, there's just a, a crack in the bone wide open. Yeah. It's not wanting to reach together. Wow. And you got absolutely hardly no feeling at all. No yeah. feeling here unless you push really hard. Inside's like a solid dead material, but it's it's alive because it's it, everything's alive, but it feels dead because it just feels solid. Did the doctor say the uh, feeling would ever come back? Doctor don't know. They don't know. They don't know how the nerves will act. Uh -huh. I mean, he, he says, they say, eventually most things line back up together. It just, just takes to time. To some degree, it just takes, takes time. takes time. But I guess the blood vessels seem to heal themselves or something? Blood vessels are under pressure right now. They probably weren't severed. Uh-huh. Just the smaller vessels, not the main vessels. Wow. But you can't see them because there's excessive new material. I see. And it indentation down to the bone. So there's push down right here. So the circulation is slow. So I get swelling here. I used to get swelling all the way to here. It was pretty gnarly. It's bordering gangrene when I when it happened. Well, how long ago did that happen? It's been one year this next month on the 18th. A year ago. So that's the healing after one year. That's one year. It's doing pretty good. This area is slow. The outside was healing very fast. Then this started to deteriorate a little bit again. Mm -hmm. But it's healed back together here. And this is doing good, but this has a hole right here that's taking time. And you had two operations? Two operations. One emergency operation to get the circulation back and line up everything. Then another operation to clean the inside again, make sure it was clean. Had a vacuum pump on it for two days. To get all the pus. Well, it takes things out, and when it, what it does is things that are under vacuum, human anatomy, human membrane that's under vacuum, it it heals faster, promotes the healing, because bacteria can't live under the vacuum. Oh, I see. So they actually seal it and vacuum inside in a slow pulse. Uh-huh. They don't like deflate me or nothing, no. Right, they put a little, it's almost like vacuuming a, a, like an air conditioning unit or a, a compressor unit, taking all the air as... Taking the Freon. Or taking, the, like in a compressor, you have to put a vacuum on it. I mean, yeah, like, oh, a, like I, a vacuum, yeah, exactly, a compressor. A compressor. It vacuum. is a compressor, it's an electronic one that... And it 
slowly vacuums it it's, out. It sucks the, the moisture out, and that kills helps kill bacteria. It helped, huh? It helped for two days, uh, but I had such a big wound right here. Uh huh. I had a big oval wound right there, big, big giant oval wound. And how long did it take for that to heal? That took uh, six six months. Wow, six months to heal. Jeez. Then then this last for four months or five months is has been very slow. This this actually was scabbed over before this one. Uh -huh. But I went to a wound care doctor and they automatically take the gross scab off. That scab was was from here, from here all the way down to right here was a big scab. They took a scalpel and cut it off. Wow. Then they start what they do is they keep you growing skin with pink flesh underneath. Mm -hmm. They don't want it to scab because they want it to be a clean, scarless growth. They don't want no scabbing, huh? No scabbing. I see. Then there's a cut right here. Overall, it's about 18 inches of scar. Do you have to wear? Do you have to use a, a, cr a crutch? I was crutches? wearing. I was using uh, crutches, but crutches are hurt your arms. Uh huh. So then I had a scooter, a knee scooter. I put my knee on it, cruise around. All little knees, knee I skills. have that right there. Yeah, so that, that works pretty good, huh? Yeah. But I I had what I had what's called moxicillin. Uh huh. For this pain. Moxicillin. Moxicillin, no, for not for pain, for bacteria. Oh, yeah, for the foot. For the the infection. Uh huh. 